Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Shifts and Pucks News Pack for Tuesday, or sorry, Thursday, June the 9th. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Shifts and Pucks, Facebook.com Shifts and Pucks, YouTube.com Shifts and Pucks, Twitch.com Shifts and Pucks. Subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as on the Area 51 Sports Network. As, of course, tonight, Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Final between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden. John Cooper have already confirmed that Braden Point will not play. By the way, series tied at two. Uh, looks like uh, Dylan Strom and uh, Philip Schiedel will be game time decisions for game five for the Rangers. Uh, that would be huge if they, they're, of course, or Ryan's room, not Dylan. Sorry about that. Uh, Strom did not play Tuesday, lower body injury. As, and the as far as Cheadle, uh, Cheadle did not, uh, he left in the second period on Tuesday. Uh, Jared Gallant says Strom would, would hopeful that would play Tuesday. He was real close, but uh, so we'll have to see if that can happen. This has been a home game series so far. The New York Rangers have won two their, the first two games at home. Tampa Bay, of course can have won both of their games at home. Remember, they were down 2-0 to the Rangers in Game 3 and came back and won. And then they won on uh, as well on my Tuesday. So uh, we'll have to see what happens here. I, you know, if if Tampa Bay wins, I would wonder if this turns into a six-game series and Tampa Bay takes the next four the Rangers win, I could still get to see this going seven. It's uh, uh, becoming a home series. But uh, without Strom, without Cheadle in the lineup, I mean, I know that, the, you know, with along, as well with about Philip Cheadle, I know that for the Canucks, Vander, uh, he was in the JT Miller rumor and sweepstakes. So there's some interest in him. Uh, he's a, he's coming along. He's coming along a little bit. Uh but, uh, and I know some may not be as high in him, but that kid line with him and Lafrenia and Kako uh, is a good line. And you just having two, not having two quality centers against defending Stanley Cup champions, I just think it makes it really tough. So we'll have to see what happens for that game there. But that's the big one. New York Rangers, Tampa Bay Lightning game five. Bruce Cassidy spoke to the media today. He's uh he, uh, of course, was fired by the Boston Bruins on Monday. We, I put that out as our Shifts and Bucks pod clip, by the way, so you can check that out on uh, YouTube. Uh, Cassidy said he was shocked. Uh, he was under the impression that he would be back to and preparing her, but uh, it looked like he got a... Don Sweeney kind of gave him a vote of confidence, but then Sweeney apparently came to his house and... Uh, there uh, and he was let go. Um, he, you know, as far as some some of the criticisms uh, there, his uh, Sweeney says uh, a new voice will resonate with the players. And I think that there have been some specific rumors about his approach. Uh, of course, that's been targeted with David Krejci. That's been targeted with why Jake DeBrusque had requested a trade out of Boston. Uh, as far as that, in my uh, Cassidy said in my next challenge, I'll make sure I'm mindful of the messaging because I respect Donnie when he talks to me about when you need to do better. Uh, looks like he is getting an interview for the Philadelphia Flyers job. It looks like wouldn't be surprised if he's on the radar of a few teams. Of course, the Jets are looking for a coach, Flyers, Stars, Golden Knights, Red Wings, and Blackhawks. By the way, just as a side note, Brad Shaw has been linked to the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, and Ulf Samuelson was let go as Florida Panthers assistant coach. Rick Dollywell was suspecting that that may be someone that the Canucks would be interested in. So uh, there is a lot in there in the coaching carousel, but uh, Cassidy spoke today. Uh, so the assistant coaches for what was supposed to be the NHL version of the Olympic team, Barry Trotz, Pete DeBoer, Bruce Cassidy, not employed. However, looking looking like Pete DeBoer could be the next coach of the Dallas Stars. Uh, uh, he, of course, was like go by Vegas at the end of the season after they had a tough year, and Dallas moved on from Rick Bonus after their playoff loss of the Calgary Flames. Uh, so there is looking like some interest 
gleaning there. Of course, DeBoer led the San Jose Sharks to the Stanley Cup uh, as well. He also was a, he's, uh, of course, has had success here in terms of, of his coaching career. And, of course, the question with DeBoer and the criticism that has been with him. Of course, he coached with the Panthers, Devils, Sharks, and Knights. Uh, and 470 and three, 470 wins, 348 losses. The questions about goaltending, of course, still one of the best performances, of course, for goaltender. Of course, it's hard not to forget the performance that Jake Ottinger put out, of course, and that's going to be the question. Dallas is in a good situation, though, here. So this is, it would be an interesting hire for the Stars. If you do hire Pete DeBoer, uh, you've got, of course, uh, you've got Rupe Hintz that's on the rise. You've got, uh, of course, Jason Robertson, who needs a new contract on the rise. You've got, I think, one of the top defensemen in the National Hockey League, Miro Heiskin. And, of course, you got Jake Ottinger, who could take a step back. But you've got goaltending, which is always something. You've got players coming, like Wyatt Johnson and Logan Stankoven. There's been some good drafting going on in Dallas. Of course, the questions around Sagan and Ben and that contract is is up there. And of course, they signed Dennis Gurionov, Dennis Gurionov to a contract one year prove it deal. There's some good talent in Dallas. I think that would be a good fit, uh, but we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, so that's the other name in the coaching search. Uh, Vander Kane uh, spoke. Uh, talked today, um, and I'm not sure what to read into this, uh, but of course, of course, he signed. Uh, he scored. The, he signed a certain when the free agent with the Oilers, 13 playoff goals. Uh, he posted on Twitter today. Thank you for all the fans who supported this year. To everyone who who doubted me, thank you as well. To my Oilers teammates, I appreciate appreciate each and every single one of you for welcoming me in and embracing me in such a genuine way. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to play with such a committed, hardworking, loyal group of men. The Edmonton Oilers are a first-class organization with such great staff from top to bottom, and I thank them for giving me the opportunity to play for such a historic franchise. To the fans of Edmonton, I thank you for treating my family and I with such a, such a kindness and respect. That's reading like a goodbye letter to some people. Um look, I'm not going to sit here and praise Evander Kane. I just, I'm not comfortable doing that. Um, I, did he score a lot of goals? Yes, he, he did. Uh, was he productive on the offensive end? Yes. Do I think that there's other things in his game that I, needs work? Absolutely. Um, would I sign him to a long-term deal? Not on my life. Uh, and if I'm, but if I'm Evander Kane, I don't know if I would be walking away from the Edmonton Oilers. That seems like a place that it works. And the Oilers gave him an opportunity when a lot of other teams would have said, no, thank you, not interested. That's been the read that I get. And if Vander Kane is a player that is growing, I think he should take a short-term contract. And I think he should go back to Edmonton. That would be my opinion. Um, but if he wants a long-term deal, if I'm the Oilers, I I would run away from that as fast as possible. So if, um, this is a very interesting decision for Kane. Um, yeah, just with everything going on for him, again, I, he's, he's just not a guy I'm super comfortable complimenting uh, with. But to me, if I'm Evander Kane, what the Oilers did, a lot of other teams may not have done that. He could assume that 32 teams would do have done that. Not sure. He had a chance to play with with two of the most dynamic offensive players we have ever seen. One, well, one's for sure in Connor McDavid. He was this close to getting. He got to the conference finals. Just think, it's, if he's saying goodbye to Edmonton and, and putting himself out there in this market with a Johnny Gaudreau out there, with a JT Miller out there, a Philip Forsberg out there. I think it's an interesting decision, but I'm not a Vander Kane. That's that's all I'll say. Now, another name that has come up in Calgary here a little bit here, right? we'll just touch on this, is Jesse Puriarvi. And I tweeted, by the way, you can follow me on Kevl, K-E-V-O-L-E. I'm a little confused that some people want 
to target Jesse Puliarvi as a trade target. Well, first of all, he plays for the Edmonton Oilers. And of course, according to Ryan Rashard, it looks like uh, Puliarvi will probably play his last game as an Oiler. I would suspect that they qualify him on, a, on their qualifying offer and then look to trade him. And I think that there, I see, I've seen a few teams expressing interest in him. Is there talent with Jesse Puliarvi? I think so. I think he's a, there's a talented player there. But I also saw a guy that was put in situations. He played with Connor McDavid. He had six goals in 52 games. And I know that there was injuries. I know there was a bunch of other factors here. But this was the third overall pick in 2016. He was picked ahead of Ole Olevi. He was picked ahead of Matthew Kachuk. He, I'm just having a lot of trouble saying that this is this guy's going to break out and to th- throw, put him in a in this situation, especially in Calgary. Where is he going to play in Calgary? Like, is you know you're not going to put him with Lynn, you Daryl Sutter's not going to put him with Lindholm and Kachuk of Kachuk uh, or Goudreau. Uh, you're not going to put him on the top two lines. I don't think he replaces Tyler Toffoli, uh, and I don't see him on a fourth line. And if you're going to give a fourth line, why are you not going to give it to a guy like Jacob Pelche? I just don't see the fit in Calgary with Jesse Puyarvi, and I don't quite understand this and. I just not, I see talent, but I think that there's other things that this need to be at work here with Jesse Puyari. And I'm not, even if I, even with the Canucks, I just don't see a fit. And I don't see Vancouver Twitter going after Jesse, P, uh, suggesting Jesse Puyari. So that's been something that's, that's interesting there as well. So, and then a, some other news, of course, well, with the WHL uh, last night, the oil, oil Kings scored with, well, it was 3.5 seconds left on the clock. It was about, turned out to be about four seconds to go, but the Edmonton Oil Kings came away with a big 3-2 win in Kent, Washington over the Thunderbirds. Now, uh, the series heads back to Edmonton. Now, normally this would be a 2-3-2 format, but there was a scheduling issue in Kent with the building. So Seattle for Game 5 on Saturday will be considered the home team when those two teams play in Edmonton. But uh, that's a heartbreaking loss for the Edmund, uh, for the Seattle Thunderbirds. Um, fought really hard. It was a low event game for the most part. Uh, uh, Thunderbirds held the Oil Kings down in shots for that game, uh, and just uh, it, just it, it feel for the. For the Thunderbirds, in terms of how that game went, I, it, it's tough to go back and think that you're going to win three in a row in Edmonton. But you have to just start by winning, trying to win one. But Logan Ohaniak scoring that goal, uh, the Josh Williams scored two in the second, and then Lucas Iona, Flames prospect, who I think has had a pretty good playoff. Uh, Overall, getting into the thick of things, I'm, I'm interested to see his next steps when he gets into Flames camp. But the Thunderbirds outshot the Oil Kings 34 to 23, two for five on the power play. They killed off seven minutes of penalty kill minutes early because of the Brendan Cooney hit to Brendan Cooney by Tyrell Bauer, Thunderbirds captain. He got five minutes in interference, and Cooney's head hit the ice. He left the game on a stretcher, on a stretcher, and it was a just a very uh, quiet scene in in Kent there in Seattle, Kent there for that. Um, and as far as any update I hear from Brendan Cooney, uh, haven't seen any. Just looking here. Uh, no news. I haven't seen any news as of yet. So hopefully we'll hopefully good news is coming out there for Brendan Cooney. And of course they'll be back in action on Saturday there as well. And then finally U17 invites, uh, have, have been announced, which include Tasia Ginla. He has been part of the, uh, part of the invites. Of course, he is the son of a guy you may have heard of, Jerome Aginla. Uh, but he has been, uh, of course, it's a, 
uh, lots of stars have been through there, uh, through that tournament, the U17 tournament. And uh, so uh, in terms of the invites and the news around that, uh, we've got include, uh, that includes Tasia Ginla from the Thunderbirds, a couple of other invites, Hyde Davidson, Macklin, uh, Celebrini, uh, among others, uh, of course. So the camp will take place in Calgary at the Mark and McPhail Center, July 10th to 16th. And of course, uh, we'll get more of when that, uh, about that tournament as we go through. But uh, Tasia Ginla, taking that next step. Uh, of course, Jerome's daughter Jade was expected to be part of the women's team, but she's sustained an injury and will miss that tournament uh, and miss her in- invite. Uh, but I uh, just, the talent with Jade, I, I, I feel bad for her, but I know that she's going to play again. So that is the news for today. And of course, some of the things that are going on, of course, you can follow us all. We'll be back. Uh, we're going to be moving to Sundays uh, to do our podcasts uh, as the summer goes on. Uh, Sunday live in the evening, 630. Uh, probably we're still setting in time. We'll have to check out on Twitter for that. Uh, but you can all follow us all individually on Twitter. Sean Beardy, Canuck 03, Tyler, T-N-O-B-L-E. Of course, Devin is Gord Howe 09, Chris is Schneids, S C H N E I D Z. I am K E V U L E. Shiz and Pucks, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as on the Area 51 Sports Network. Thanks everyone for watching and listening. We'll talk to you all very soon. Bye for now.